Welcome back to Beyond the Uniform. I'm Justin Asiri, and my goal is to help members of the military community thrive in their post-service career and life. Normally on the show, I interview a military veteran about their civilian career, what they do, how they got there, advice for others seeking to do the same. Today, I want to do a book review on a business book that I found incredibly helpful and hope will help you as well. So the book is called 4,000 Weeks. Time Management for Mortals. It's by Oliver Berkman. I did this on audiobook. I'd recommend that. I think the the, the author actually has a really uh, great voice for listening to a book. But um, I thought I would structure this in two ways. First, I'm going to give you a laundry list of uh, what he calls 10 tools for embracing your finitude, uh, which I think are really, really powerful concepts. It's kind of um, a quick tactical tactical takeaway for those of you in a rush. And then for those of you who stick around, I'll go through and do a more in-depth book review, uh, partly as a refresher for myself. I plan to listen to this just to kind of re-steep in some of these concepts, but also um, I hope it will give you more of a motivation to read the book and get a sense of what it's about. Um, I found a lot of this information on a website called Slow with two W's, slow.co, where uh, the website owner provided a great uh, synopsis of the book. Uh, but I did read it and really enjoyed it on my own. So let's start with that laundry list of more tactical, actionable items. So uh, it's called 10 Tools for Embracing Your Finitude. And the quote from the book to precede this was, in this book, I've made the case for embracing the truth about your limited time and limited control over that time. Not simply because it's the truth, so you might as well face it, but because it's actively empowering to do so. By stepping more fully into reality as it actually is, you get to accomplish more of what matters and feel more fulfilled about it. Um, We'll get into this when we go into the summary, but I've read a lot of books on productivity, about working smarter. I think many of us are motivated by that. This book is completely different than every productivity book that I've I've read, and uh, the summary will kind of make a better case for that. But in essence, it's not about working harder or working smarter or more efficiently. It's much more foundational mindset shifts that I found refreshing. So here's the top 10. Uh, one, fi- adopt a fixed volume approach to productivity. And to quote for that, keep two to-do lists, one open and one closed. The open list is for everything that's on your plate and will doubtless be nightmarishly long. Feed tasks from the open list to the closed one. That is a list with a fixed number of entries, 10 at most. The rule is that you can't add a new task until one is completed. A complementary strategy is to establish predetermined time boundaries for your daily work. I love this one. I plan on implementing this week. I I kind of always have an out of control to do list, and I like the thought of just having, in my case, probably two or three that I'm working on, not multitasking, focusing on something to completion, and then moving on to the next. Number two, serialize, serialize, serialize. And the quote to go along with that, for focus on one big project at a time, or at most, one work project and one non-work project, and see it to completion before moving on to what's next. This is something I've dabbled in, and I, I just find I feel so much more grounded and fulfilled when I take this approach. It's hard for me not to bounce around between things, to bounce between email or Slack or LinkedIn, but when I do focus on one big project at a time uh, for myself and for my team, I notice I get a lot more done and I'm happier that way. Number three, decide in advance what to fail at. And the quote, the great benefit of strategic underachievement, that is nominating in advance whole areas of life in which you won't expect excellence of yourself, is that you focus that time and energy more effectively, fail on a slick cyclical basis to aim to do the bare minimum at work for the next two months, for example, while you focus on your children, or let your fit- fitness goals temporarily lapse while you apply yourself to election canvassing, then switch your energies to whatever you were neglecting. I really like this too. I kind of get in a cycle where I feel guilty about not doing everything perfectly. And I think this just admits that you can't do that. And so being a little bit more intentional in what I neglect or as he says, what I fail at. 
Number four, focus on what you've already completed, not just on what's left to complete. Quote, keep a done list, which starts empty first thing in the morning, in which you then gradually fill with whatever you accomplish through the day. I think this is such a great mindset note for many of us who are high achievers. It's always easy to focus on what's left undone. And occasionally in my task management software, I'll look back at the end of the day and just be like, wow, I did so much. It's kind of uh, emboldening to realize how much you do accomplish rather than just endlessly looking to the next thing to do. Number five, consolidate your caring. Quote, Consciously pick your battles in charity, activism, and politics to decide that your spare time for the next couple of years will be spent lobbying for prison reform and helping at a local food pantry, not because fires in the Amazon or the fate of refugees don't matter, but because you understand that to make a difference, you must focus your finite capacity for care. Love this as well. I can spread myself too thin. I get fired up around causes. I want to help everywhere, and I do find when I When I focus my attention and energy and money in one direction, it tends to have a bigger bigger impact. Number six, embrace boring and single-purpose technology. Quote, you can combat this problem by making your devices as boring as possible. First, by removing social media apps, even email if you dare, and then by switching the screen from color to grayscale. Choose devices with only one purpose, such as the Kindle e-reader, or uh, on which it's tedious and awkward to do anything but read. Um, this is something I dabble with quite a bit. I, I will go through phases of deleting Reddit and email, which are my two biggest offenders. Um, but I do know that this helps. I, I really like the, the changing the screen um, the screen to grayscale, just kind of removing all appeal. I find that um, my phone is an endless suck of time and it's never really fulfilling. It's never like the email I'm responding to is that critical. Number seven, seek out novelty in the mundane. Quote, pay more attention to every moment, however mundane, to find novelty not by doing radically different things, but by plunging more deeply into the life you already have. Um, I think this is so great. Uh, you know, a lot of, if you do meditation, a lot of mindfulness is about bringing gratitude and appreciation to the boring, mundane moments. And I find that usually that's when I reach for my phone. When I'm stuck in line, when my son is playing, that's when I get bored and I want to fill that time with something that I I think uh, failingly view as productive, scrolling the news, scrolling Reddit, looking at Facebook, social media, none of these things really nourish, but they give me a sense of being busy. But um, I really like his thought of trying to, uh, to seek out novelty in the mundane. When I do that, I find that I slow down, that I'm much more present, I get less angsty, and uh, overall it makes me happier. Eight, be a, quote, researcher, in relationships. Again, quote, when presented with a challenging or boring moment, try deliberately adopting an attitude of curiosity in which your goal isn't to achieve any particular outcome or successfully explain your position, but as Hobson puts it, to figure out who this human being is that we're with. Um, This is a big part of my job at Executive Presence where I interview CEOs and help them tell their story on social media. Um, I've just found how powerful curiosity is. And I'm trying more and more to do this in my day-to-day life when I meet with someone dropping my initial judgment of who they are, just trying to meet them where they're at and be curious about who they are. It's a lot more fun way to live and generally end up being surprised by uh, the things that people learn and share with me. Number nine, cultivate instantaneous generosity. Whenever a generous impulse arises in your mind to give money, check in on a friend, send an email praising someone's work, Act on the impulse right away rather than putting it off until later. Uh, This is one that I actually do pretty well, and it brings a lot of joy to my life. Um, I'm pretty good when I think of a friend that I'll just text them in that moment. I'll send them a photo, or I'll just let them know that I'm thinking about them. It doesn't have to be anything deep or profound, but I really do find that it creates a lot more connection in my life. And anytime I put it off, I forget. And so I try to just kind of, if I think of someone, send them a quick note. Hey, buddy, thinking of you, just thought about X, Y, Z. 
and that's it. And and I find that it's not the same as having an hour long deep conversation by phone or in person, but with two kids, that's not always feasible. And so it seems like little tiny lifelines. And I like that he applies that to giving money, checking in on friends, sending an email, praising someone's work. I think those are all great things. Number 10, practice doing nothing. Quote, when it comes to the challenge of using your 4,000 weeks well, the capacity to do nothing is indispensable because if you can't bear the discomfort of not acting, you're far more likely to make poor choices with your time, simply to feel as if you're acting. Choices such as stressfully trying to hurry activities that won't be rushed or feeling you ought to spend every moment being productive in the service of future goals, thereby postponing fulfillment to a time that never arrives. Do nothing meditation, for which the instructions are simply to set a timer, probably only for five or ten minutes at first, sit down in a chair, and then stop trying to do anything. Every time you notice you're doing something, including thinking or focusing on your breathing or anything else, stop doing it. I love this. Um, This is actually a practice I learned from a teacher, John Wineland. I studied with him for about three years, and he talked about it as doing nothing meticulously, ideally in nature. Um, This is something I try to do once per week, where I literally go to a park, I sit on a bench, and I do, I set my timer for an hour, I turn off my, or I set my phone on airplane mode, and I do nothing. I'm not meditating, I'm not planning, I'm not journaling, I'm just being in nature. It is excruciatingly hard for me to do. It is so hard to do nothing, not walking, hiking. There's part of me that always wants to be getting something done. Um, Generally, I find it takes about 30 minutes for my engine to rev down, for me to actually start noticing things that have been happening all around me, birds chirping, dogs barking, whatever it is, but I just dismiss or don't even notice. It takes about 30 minutes to kind of shift gears. And always at the end of the hour, I feel just full. I feel like I've got a full tank of gas. I feel like I've got more energy. I feel slowed down. I feel happier. It is unbelievable, both how difficult it is, and yet also how incredibly fulfilling it is. So I love that he put this in his list as number 10, that practice doing nothing. Highly, highly recommend that to myself and to listeners. I had planned on doing this in one episode. Looking at the time right now, we're about 12 minutes in. I'm going to record the second piece as a different episode just to keep this bite-sized. I'm realizing it's not always best to have these monstrous episodes. I hope you enjoyed. Next week, I'll continue this with a more in-depth look at the book, 4,000 Weeks. I hope you'll check it out. Take care.